What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here. And for the first time in a while, you got Treeb here all alone to talk about your favorite team, my favorite team, and everybody's favorite team, the Jacksonville Jaguars. And in 2020, the Jaguars have a lot to prove. This team could either be really, really, really bad or... Or really mediocre. I don't really see a situation where the Jags are going to be extremely, extremely stellar. But this could be a season where the Jags start to rebuild the franchise and they figure out who those key pieces are that will build this franchise for years to come. Now there are five players that have a lot to prove in 2020, especially if they want to be on that Jaguar Dynasty team. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, this is the five Jaguar players that have the most to prove heading into the 2020 season. Number five, Gardner Minshew. Now I'm not going to put these in any real direct order because if we're being serious here, Gardner Minshew without a doubt definitely has the most to prove in 2020, especially with how much this organization is buying in to Gardner Minshew. The Jaguars, the last time they bought into a quarterback this hard, of course it was Blake Bortles and that did not go so well. Gardner Minshew definitely shows a lot more promise than Blake Bortles did. And I know Bortles went to the AFC Championship game, and that's what all the Bortles defenders are going to say and all the people that have those doubts about Gardner Minshew. Gardner Minshew had an impressive rookie season, got snubbed about, uh, got snubbed from being nominated as Rookie of the Year as well as Offensive Rookie of the Year. He definitely deserved both nods, but not playing a full season definitely hurt his overall stock. But if Minshew wants to have a starting job for the Jaguars, I think there's still a chance if he does all right, he can get a starting job somewhere else if they really, really needed a quarterback. But if he wants to be in the NFL for a long time, he's going to have to play extremely, extremely well this season. And I think he has that potential. He has targets all over the field. This is one of the deeper wide receiver groups that the Jaguars have had in a long time. Obviously, in 2017, if the Jags had Allen Robinson for a full season, you might be able to say that 2017 was pretty deep. But if you look at these 2020 wide receivers, you got two young guys that the Jaguars drafted in Colin Johnson and LaVishka Chanel, and you got guys like D.D. Westbrook, D.J. Char, Chris Conley, all guys that uh, Gardner Minshew built tremendous chemistry with during last season. So hopefully Gardner Minshew can continue that con continue those connections and can continue to be a dominant quarterback because he definitely has a lot to prove next season. Number four, Jared Wilson and Ronnie Harrison. I decided to combine these two because the safety position for the Jaguars as a whole has a lot to prove. Not only just these two, but the depth guys and some of the people that the Jaguars drafted in the draft class as well. This is a wide open position, especially because we really don't know what we're getting after even a full season with these guys and some injuries along the way as well. You still don't really know what you're getting with the likes of Ronnie Harrison and Jared Wilson. This is a position group that I would have liked to see the Jaguars try and improve a lot more. I thought um, in free agency, even with the NFLPA stuff that went on around Jacksonville, I thought they did a all right job in getting free agents, especially some veterans to uh, help in positions of need, like the tight end position, the linebacker position. But uh, I thought safety was a glaring hole for the Jaguars, the secondary as a whole. Obviously, they went out and drafted C.J. Henderson the first round as a corner, and that was a big get for the Jags. But as far as the safety position goes, we really don't know what we're getting with these two guys. Ronnie Harrison's very inconsistent. His rookie year, he looked really, really good. And obviously last year, he kind of fell off a little bit, got hurt every now and again. And you just you just don't want to see that. Obviously, mine and Jason's boy, uh, Cody Davis. <laughs> I don't even know if Cody Davis still plays for the team anymore. But uh, Cody Davis is always a fun guy to bring up. But Ronnie Harrison and Jared Wilson are two players that are starters in the weakest position group for the Jaguars heading into 2020. And if they want a spot as a starter next year or even a spot as a team, they need to prove themselves and they need to have a good season in 2020. Number three, Trey Herndon. Trey Herndon is another guy we talked about earlier when we talked about Jared Wilson and um, Ronnie Harrison. Trey Herndon was a guy that got thrusted into a position where he didn't think he was going to be thrusted into with the whole Jalen Ramsey situation. But a lot of people, including myself, think that he made the most 
out of his opportunities. He was targeted a lot. He was picked on a lot. And there were some times where he got beat or his coverage skills weren't that great. But as an undrafted free agent, he definitely showed some signs where he could be an all right, decent cornerback. Now, these corners that the Jaguars are going to have in 2020, you got to imagine CJ Henderson is going to be the number one corner, and he's going to be following whoever the number one wide receiver is all game long. And they got Trey Herndon playing the other outside corner, and Herndon's going to be the guy that the quarterbacks are going to be looking at. And Herndon needs to do a good job at shutting those guys down because you already know CJ Henderson looks like a lockdown corner, so Trey Herndon needs to put in that work as well and hopefully his safeties on the back end can help him out even more and Trey Herndon can have a good year and an undrafted free agent can have a great story to talk about when he becomes a star corner in Jacksonville. Another corner that the Jags have that not a lot of people are talking about still is DJ Hayden. I think DJ Hayden is going to help out these two uh, young corners tremendously even though he's not an outside corner. He's a nickel corner I think with his experience in the league and just, you know, being a corner in the NFL for as long as he has, I think that's going to bring up a lot of good experience and a good a, a lot of teaching points as well for these two young corners. So hopefully DJ Hayden could come in and teach Trey Herndon how to be a baller, and he can ball out like he did last season at some points, and he can stay on this team for a good while. Number two, Andrew Norwell. I decided to put Andrew Norwell on this list instead of AJ Can because I think AJ Can's already proved that he is dog shit. He's bad, he's terrible, he's a liability to the team. He doesn't have much to prove because he's bad. And I think this is a position that the Jaguars should have upgraded, just like the safety positions, you know, two positions that the Jaguars have needed to fill for a while, and they still didn't really do that. Uh, they tried to do that with Will Richardson with AJ Can, but. Will Richardson was just as bad as AJ can, I guess. But Andrew Norwell on the flip side is a guy that me and Jason talked about, and I said I don't think he deserves to get a lot of the flock that he does. I mean, there are some times where he gives up some plays, and you think this isn't an All Pro guard. What the hell is he doing? You know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta realize like being an offensive lineman's hard. You know, when you're elite, you're elite, and everybody praises you. But when you're good and you let some bad plays happen. Uh, you're going to get the brunt of the internet for a long time. And I think that's kind of what Andrew Norwell, unfortunately, suffered from. And I think he's a good guard, and especially with a restructured contract, I think with the incentives that he has on those on that contract, I think is going to give him a lot of reasons to play good football next year. And we're going to be seeing the bounce back of Andrew Norwell because he has a lot to prove on that restructured contract. Coming in at number one, we have Taven Bryan. Taven Bryan, the first year the Jaguars drafted him, he was very awkward to watch, and he didn't really uh, put down a lot of numbers. Last year, though, I think he developed and he played better than he did the year before, which is a good thing to see. You love to see that out of players. You love to see progression. But this is a year where Taven Bryan's going to be getting more playing time than he ever has in his career, and this is where he's going to have to prove that he deserves to be on the team, especially with a defensive line that right now is going to be losing Yannick Ngakwe. He won't play, and Taven Bryan sees that extended playing time. He's going to have to play well, and he's going to have to play well against the pass and against the run, and in this new 3-4 uh, hybrid that the Jaguars are going to try to run, he's going to have to play extremely, extremely well. So Taven Bryan, I think, has some of the most to prove heading into 2020, especially being a first-round pick, a guy that the Jaguars took over the likes of Lamar Jackson. You know what I mean? So Taven Bryan's going to have to come in and have an excellent 2020 campaign. And that was the five Jaguars that have the most approved heading into 2020. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks, or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.